and we're healing and we're, we're getting out of these toxic relationships, um, choosing ourselves is probably one of the best things that we can do. up you guys welcome to my channel classy cohen if you don't know i am kayla as you can probably tell from the title of the video today um i will be doing a 10 tips slash advice on how to heal after a toxic relationship um or a toxic breakup so without further ado let's hop right into the video okay so quick disclaimer before we get started i do want to um acknowledge that there are different situations out there um as far as just to throw out some examples, this might be someone that you were once married to. This might be someone that you share children with. This may be someone that you were just dating for a very long period of time. Maybe you guys live together, whatever the case may be. I wanted to acknowledge the different situations and I know um, people in the comments are probably gonna be like, well, how am I supposed to do this and that if I'm living with the person? So I just wanted to throw it out there that I would advise you come back to this video after you've moved out or that person has moved out after you've gotten that divorce and you guys are living separately. This is more so for the girls who are ready to start that healing journey after everything has transpired, after you guys are separated and, you know, not living together. So just wanted to throw that in there real quick. All right. So. Um, I apologize if I keep looking down, you guys. Um, I do have all of my notes here on my laptop. So just wanted to give you guys a forewarning. Number one is to delete all pictures of you and this person. And I think that that is extremely important because you don't want to give yourself any reason to look back, reminisce, um, dwell on the past, nothing like that. So that's just first and foremost second that i have here is to block that person and any mutual friends that you guys may have and their family members and i'm gonna elaborate just a little bit on the mutual friends part as much as you may love this mutual friend if there are any mutual friends you may really love this person you may have known this person longer than your ex-partner but and i say but because sometimes the people that care about us or that we care about can be in enablers y'all i cannot talk cannot be enabled can be y'all get what i'm trying to say they can be enablers to the person who you were once in a relationship with so let's say that your ex is really narcissistic and maybe they didn't show that in front of family and friends so your mutual friend has no idea that this person is a is a different type of way behind closed doors maybe they think they're this great person so they may be enabling your ex even when they don't know that they are doing it and that all in all doesn't help your situation you're trying to get away from this person you're done with this person we're not going back and sometimes that mutual friend can like i said enable the situation just tell your ex you know oh you know she loves wine and chocolates why don't you just you know pop a better job and surprise her and stuff like that and oh i know where she works and you know sometimes people can just be enablers even when they don't know it so um that's why i say block mutual friends even if it's temporary okay maybe you really do like this person just block them temporarily or at least take them off your social media so they're not able to give your ex updates on your life all right so next on here we have number three which is change your number if necessary i put that in parentheses because sometimes you know, maybe you guys did have a toxic breakup, but they, your, your ex never took it, you know, they never took it any further than that. So I say if necessary, you know the type of person that you were with, you know the type of tendencies, tendency, y'all, I cannot talk today. You know the type of tendencies they have when they're upset, when they're mad, um, especially if it's a narcissist. So I would definitely say change your number. I'm not even gonna say that. I was gonna say if you're not willing to block them, but I still think that in certain cases, changing your number all around can be beneficial because I know from past experience with myself and with friends and family that I have, the ex can call you on no call ID. They can call you from a text now number. They can use the, those enablers to their advantage. And you know, oh, you know, just, just, um, send her a text message for me just you know i just want to know she's okay no we're not doing none of that okay 
maybe you know you know your situation so maybe changing your phone number maybe it's necessary and maybe it's not and i know you guys are probably like girl changing my number that is a lot i've had this number for x amount of years me too okay i've had my number for forever so i know changing your phone number can be a hassle you got to update all of these companies and all of the websites and all the apps and stuff and businesses and schools and just a whole lot of stuff it comes with a lot but if you are really looking for an out from that situation that may just be one thing that you have to do when you're on this healing journey all right so number four is to remove yourself from social media and i'm gonna personally recommend you do about one to two weeks now that's my personal preference i am not a professional in any way shape or form um i just say one to two weeks so that you can regroup you can assess the situation that you just came out of um and just look back look back and say you know when did I change in this relationship? What changed in me? Did I stop dressing the way I did? Did I stop doing my makeup the way I liked? What happened to you in that relationship? You need to acknowledge that for sure. Also, then look at what did this person do to hurt me? When did I notice a change in them? What red flags came up? And I say all this to say, when you take time to assess your situation, it really helps put things in perspective. And if later on you choose to, let's say, work with a therapist, at least you in your mind have assessed the situation and you've laid mostly everything out so that when you do start therapy, if and when you start therapy, you will have a basis to go off of, a basis to start on and say, hey, these are the issues. This is what this person left me with. This person left me feeling um, selfless. This person made me feel not beautiful this person made me feel i don't know any anything right that's that's negative um so that you can start somewhere with a therapist or with just a family member or a friend that you trust number five is to spend more time around your family and friends now sometimes when we're dealing with narcissists or just toxic people in general they can tend to pull us away from the ones that we love right sorry y'all Taking this time, this crucial time, your healing time, taking this time to get back in in connection with your family and friends who you may have distanced yourself from, I feel is extremely beneficial. You may not want to talk to them right away about the whole situation, but just be open. Be open to letting these people back into your life. And just like I briefly mentioned the therapist thing, your family and friends can also be a tool like a therapist would be. They can be that shoulder for you to cry on, that comforting space. And I just would use, I would use them as a tool, you know, and not like, you. oh, go use them. Like, no, that's not like what I'm saying. Like, use them to lean on. Um... If you're like, hey, I'm having a really rough day, maybe you're gonna call your sister that you haven't talked to in a really long time. Maybe you're gonna call that auntie or maybe it's even your mom. Call them and be like, hey, I'm just having a really rough day. Could, do you have a few minutes? Could I, could I talk to you about some of the stuff that I'm feeling, that I'm going through? If you don't feel like getting a lecture from them, let them know. Be like, hey, I'm not really seeking advice right now. I'm just, I'm just trying to vent i just need someone to someone to listen to y'all i cannot talk today but y'all get what i'm trying to say just you know make it clear what you're what you need from them all right so number six and i know some people probably are not going to be open to this but i would recommend it um because it can feel like a rock comes off your your chest or something like that or um weight comes off your shoulders so only if you want to do this one number six is to write a letter to your ex now we will not be giving this letter to your ex whatsoever um so don't worry about that but writing a letter can release those emotions and tensions that you've been holding in um write a letter and say hey um i hate you if that's what you feel write what you feel um you made me feel this you made me feel that um i don't appreciate when you used to say this to me or do this to me um and then burn it 
we're gonna burn the letter right after. Or another recommendation is you can go to the Dollar Tree, get a white plate, like yes, an actual plate that you would eat off of, um, not one of those little plastic foam ones, um, an actual real plate, write in Sharpie all the things they made you feel. You made me feel angry, you made me feel worthless, you made me feel not beautiful, write all the words on this plate and then we're gonna smash it go somewhere that you can smash it don't just be smashing plates just anywhere um preferably somewhere outside maybe you take a hike somewhere and you throw it up against a tree or something i don't know that's just an example um so you can do the letter thing or you can do the plate thing number seven and i always thought that this was corny when people would bring it up to me but i kind of i get it now so number seven you guys this keeps slipping back i'm sorry and i just cut all my hair off so i'm trying to get used to wearing it out okay that was just a side a side note super irrelevant but number seven is to get a journal and i always thought that that was really silly because i was just like how is that gonna help me but you have to be open to try new things on this healing journey so that you can find things that will actually help you heal and you might not realize that writing in a journal could be one of those things until you try it so that's all i'm gonna say about that get a journal write down the things number one that you love about yourself i think that that is super important because after getting out of a toxic relationship with like a narcissist or again just a toxic person you can start to lose that sense of self and that sense of security within yourself so writing positive things about yourself can help you regroup and regain a little bit of that confidence that you once had so write down the things that you love about yourself write down the things that you want to work on about yourself and write down new boundaries that you want to have and these are not just boundaries that you're going to take into um a relationship with your next partner but these are going to be boundaries for yourself these are going to be boundaries for family members for friends okay um boundaries can be really healthy um so we're going to come up with some new boundaries that you want and need moving forward this is just a random example and this can uh, again boundaries like i said can pertain to anybody including yourself but this is just one one example that i came up with while i was writing these notes um so let's say you go on a date with someone and you really like them your boundary to yourself is i'm not going to have intercourse with this person at least for the first 90 days i'm gonna get to know this person first so that's just one boundary right all right so number eight falls in line with doing things that you love but the notes that i took down here they kind of pertain to stuff that i like but they might also resonate with you and these are just for example purposes so i wrote down start doing your makeup again start getting your nails and toes done again start um doing your hair more going to get your hair done pampering yourself go shopping at target give yourself a hundred dollar uh budget our main goal here on number eight is to give ourselves that confidence boost again give ourselves that um feeling of independence um so yeah number nine and i kind of talked about it a little briefly earlier is to get a therapist and i'm not gonna go too deep on the whole therapist thing but get it get a therapist that you trust if you need to date around the first therapist that you get in contact with you might not really like that person so if you need to come up with a list of questions whether it's on like a in your journal or in your notes on your phone or something write down at least like five to ten questions that you think are um beneficial and things that you are looking for in a therapist like i mentioned earlier you're using this therapist as a tool so you need to make sure that the tool is working in the way that you need it to so if there's certain things that you don't like about your first therapist i would recommend writing uh five to ten questions first before you even start seeing therapists but if you see one therapist and then you're like oh no definitely not for me never again not getting a therapist maybe write down all the things that you didn't really like 
So you could write things down that you didn't like about that therapist and then you could, you know, write things maybe that you did like about them, pros and cons, right? And then write out five to 10 questions that you would have for your next therapist moving forward. That's just an example. It's not always easy to talk to your lo loved ones about um, mental health, especially pertaining to relationships, maybe that they were always telling you, you know, just leave, just get out of it. Um, it's not always easy to come to them and talk to them about the situation you were in. So getting that outside person can be an awesome tool and it can give you a lot of perspective um, on your situation. And like I said, yeah, a therapist, I would use them as a tool and then they can give you tools that you can take out into the real world and use so that you're not getting triggered by certain things. Or if you are being triggered, you know how to handle that situation when you're in that moment um and then maybe you guys can talk through things that you would be looking for in an next relationship so i would say therapists can definitely be beneficial you just have to find the right one for you all right you guys so number 10 and i think that this is the most important is to give yourself grace be kind to yourself be patient with yourself and give yourself time just like grieving um healing kind of goes along with that you don't want to rush the healing process just like you wouldn't rush the grieving process and with the healing process you can go in stages you know um you can go in stages of being angry being sad being depressed reminiscing just you know stuff like that so definitely 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 be kind to yourself and give yourself the time. Sometimes people, it may take them a month. Sometimes people, it may take them a year or five years. Don't rush the healing process and definitely don't rush into getting into another relationship until you've taken that personal time to heal. I feel like that is one of the biggest things that people, especially in the black community, don't do is heal before getting into a next relationship. And that's how relationship problems start in a new relationship because you came in from the jump with all this extra baggage that you never took the time to address. And then that's also how, you know, cheating may happen or multiple baby mamas, baby daddies, whatever the case is. So definitely, definitely taking time to heal and not rushing the process is essential in the healing process. So yeah, I really enjoy talking to you guys. Um, couple quick notes um, that I forgot to mention earlier. Uh, the therapist thing, the questions, if you don't know what questions to ask, definitely use TikTok or Google. Those are great um, sources to just, you know, type in, hey, what are some questions when looking for a good therapist that fits me or something like that, right? Also, um, I've been reading this book myself and I want to recommend it. I'm pretty sure it's on Amazon and I'll put it up here somewhere for you guys um, along with the price so you guys know how much it is. Um, I don't remember where I got this book or if someone got it for me. Um, that's the only reason why I say that I'll put it up here. Um, so the book is called Self Care for Black Women. Um, but I feel like it really is a book that can be read by any woman. Um, I love that there's just, it says 150 ways to radically accept and prioritize your mind, body, and soul. So if you don't know um, self-care activities or um, practices or whatever, you guys could read a book. It doesn't have to be this book. It can be any, any book. Um, but she gives 150 different things that you can do to show yourself that love. A couple things that I'll just read here. I know one of the pages she said, don't look at your phone first thing when you wake up. I think that's great. I think we need to be in tune with the real world when we first wake up. We don't just need to hop on our phones. Oh, look what it says right here, write in a journal. Hmm. <laughs> I think that's a good one. And I promise I didn't get that from the book. Challenge your negative self-talk, vent to a friend who validates you, mourn your losses, heal your inner child. There's just a list of things in here, so I would highly recommend this book. Also, this is not a sponsorship. I just really like this book, so I would highly recommend it. And I'll put it up here one more time so you guys can see. And I like the back. It says, choose yourself. And when we're healing and when we're getting out of these toxic relationships, um, Choosing ourselves is probably one of the best things that we can do. 
All right, you guys, that is everything for today. I really appreciate you spending your time with me. If you like this video, please give it a like, comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Peace.